Hello everyone, I'm Christian Oaks-White. And I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. We are here at the Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee, to see how agriculture gets spirited. And this is where we're starting our show because this is also where Jack Daniels starts. You see, here's the statue of Jack right behind me. Behind there is the spring and that provides all of the water that they use to make Old Number 7. It really is an amazing place, full of history, and it is something to see. We'll share a little bit more about this in a moment. Lynchburg is about an hour and a half outside of Nashville. And Nashville, Tennessee hosted the 99th annual meeting of the Farm Bureau Federation. Nearly 8,000 farmers, ranchers, and their families converged on the Gaylord Opryland Resort for a week of learning, networking, setting farm policy, and a little friendly competition. Louise Louisiana won big in one of those competitions. We'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. But first, we have to talk about why everyone in the country was talking about the American Farm Bureau Convention. Anytime President Donald Trump makes an appearance, it gets attention. President Trump spoke to a packed ballroom at the American Farm Bureau Convention. Greeted by thunderous applause and numerous standing ovations, President Trump outlined the victories made for rural America since he took office. Trump touted the withdrawal of the EPA's Water of the U Waters of the U.S. rule and the recent passage of the Republican tax plan, which includes an increase in the estate tax exemption to $11 million and allows farmers to deduct 100% of the cost of new equipment in the year they make the investment. While on the stage, Trump also signed two executive orders to fund and streamline the expansion of broadband in rural areas. The president also touched on a piece of le legislation which impacts consumers as well as farmers, the Farm Bill. Trump says he's looking forward to signing a bill supported by farmers and ranchers. And I'm looking forward to working with Congress to pass the Farm Bill on time so that it delivers for all of you, and I support a bill that includes crop insurance, unless you don't want me to. Thank you. I guess you like it, right? Good. Because if I heard no applause, I'd say, forget it, give it up. Now I can't do that. Now, we're working hard on the Farm Bill, and I think it's going to go well. It's been 26 years since a sitting president spoke at the American Farm Bureau Convention. The last to do so was President George H.W. Bush in 1992. You can watch all of President Trump's remarks to the American Farm Bureau on our website at twilighttv.org. Well, we mentioned earlier that Louisiana was a big winner this year in Nashville. Russell and Amelia Kent claimed the top prize for the American Farm Bureau's Young Farmer and Rancher Achievement Award. This award goes to farmers who have excelled in their farming and ranching operation, as well as the leadership and innovation they bring to the ag industry. The big prize the Kents will take home, a brand new Ford pickup truck valued at $35,000. Amelia says this award took a lot of hard work, and she's proud that she and Russell are able to represent Louisiana in this great competition. It is such an incredible honor. Um, it, Russell and I are very proud to know the roots of our farm, um, what our farm started with, and that we did start our farm from the ground up, and that um, we're, while we're not trying to be competitive on a na national stage per se, that we are. Uh, so again, it's just an incredible honor, um, and it's very humbling for the two of us. Russell and Amelia raise about 400 head of commercial beef cattle, but are finding a new market in the custom grass-fed beef sales. Russell says this new growth of their operation has really helped them stand out in the competition. I don't think the commodity side of it, marketing the grains or the cattle and all that on the bulk scale on the commodity is going anywhere. That's really where we everybody needs to get rid of the bulk of their, their product. But I think a way to supplement that is through the direct marketing to reach a different consumer than what the regular commodities are going to instead of just a 
the specialized or the unique. If you'd like to learn more about the Kents, head on over to our website at twilighttv.org where we'll, we'll link you to a couple of their recent stories we've covered on this hardworking farm couple. I'm standing in a pretty popular place. About 280,000 people tour the Jack Daniel Distillery every year. In fact, some of these folks are enjoying it as well. They went to see the spring just a moment ago, They're taking pictures with Jack, and they're having a good time. So it's no surprise, given the history here, a history rooted in agriculture, which guides every step of the distillery's future. The bottle and label are iconic. There is no question what is inside when you see old number seven. We are water, yeast, and grains. And he is Jeff Arnett, the master distiller at the Jack Daniel Distillery. Arnett is only one of seven to hold that title going all the way back to 1866. Arnett follows the same Tennessee whiskey recipe as old Jack Daniel, which calls for a lot of corn. A good bit of that corn comes from Bragg Farms in North Alabama. The local farmer that we've gone into a grower's contract, we literally buy all of his corn every year uh, and give him a, a nice price for it. So he, he loves that. Uh, it takes all the worry uh, out of managing his business. He takes great pride, I think, in telling everybody that his corn makes Jack Daniels. Arnett takes great pride in finding the best ingredients to round out Jack's recipe. Great rye can be hard to find, and Louisiana plays a big part in getting it here. We've been bringing uh, through uh, the port of New Orleans. Uh, we've actually been bringing some of our, our rye over from uh, from Poland, out of Europe. Uh, it comes up the Mississippi, it ultimately ends up on the Cumberland River, just north of Nashville, where we can unload it and then truck it to here. A lot of Jack Daniels whiskey goes back down the river as well. Arnett says 60% of the company's business is from exports, which makes Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey the number six export product from Tennessee. The spent grain left over from the mash stays a lot closer to the distillery. If you don't work at Jack Daniels and you live in Moore County uh, and you're not retired, you're most likely, that's what you're doing. You're raising cattle. Uh, so like I said, the ground around the distillery, it's very rocky and hilly. It's not necessarily great for planting crops, but it, it is a good hay ground uh, and it's good for raising cattle on it. So about 70% will actually go right into probably a 25 mile radius of the distillery to local farmers who grow cattle here. There are not many people who live in the quaint town of Lynchburg who do not have a direct tie to the distillery. The population here is about 600 people. The distillery employs about 600 people. After more than 150 years, it's a part of residents' everyday lives. I can remember being five years old and running around the still house with my grandfather. Chris Fletcher is the assistant no master distiller. His grandfather, Frank Bobo, was the fifth master distiller. And he's still a wealth of knowledge. He's 88 years old. He lives about a mile and a half down the street. So if I ever have any questions, I can just go down there and visit for a while. On a Thanksgiving visit, Fletcher brought over a bottle of old number seven, not just any bottle, but one from the time when Bobo was the master distiller. Here's a picture of them enjoying a taste of the past that's still an important part of their present. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to be able to kind of compare those notes 40 years apart. Uh, that's a pretty special thing. What you may not know about the Jack Daniel distillery in the state of Louisiana is that there are some special connections. Fletcher's grandmother is from Crowley, Louisiana. Arnett worked for Folgers in New Orleans and was responsible for getting just the right combination of coffee beans to brew the perfect cup. So I lived in Slidell. I drove across the I-10 twin spans every morning for four and a half years, and that was where I first learned the sensory sciences. Then there's the fact that the Jack Daniel distillery can only use each barrel one time. So a lot of the used barrels help to make your favorite hot sauce. And if you look at our companies, not that far apart in age. Uh, when we turned uh, 150 years old, uh, back in 2016, I had a very nice letter from Anthony Simmons, who's the, the current president and CEO of Tabasco, where he sent me some of their family reserve and sent me a, a special bottle uh, with my name on it. And, uh, and, and recognizing, hey, you know, congratulations on becoming 150 years old. We're just right behind you, actually in 2018. Um, the Tabasco company or McElhaney company will become 150 years old. So I sense that we're kind of kindred spirits uh, with, with the McElhaney family today. And uh, so I, I take it you're probably going to send them a little something. <laughs> something I, I think so. That, I'd say it's a good trade too. I was going to say, I think they're getting an upgrade off that, but <laughs> absolutely. Perhaps Arnett will send over the latest whiskey to bear the name Jack Daniel, Jack Daniel's Tennessee Rye. You know, it's been a fun time to be the master distiller, you know, to take, to, to be part of taking Jack Daniels from three products up to 10, and, and clearly we're not done. There really is this sense of family pride that the people of Lynchburg have with our product, and they go to work every day 
believing and knowing that we make some of the best whiskey in the world. And they take a lot of pride in knowing that now there's people in 170 countries all over the world enjoying the whiskey that's made in only one place in the world, which is right here in Lynchburg. It's well known that Moore County is a dry county where Lynchburg, Tennessee is. However, there is a way to get a taste of Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey outside of the distillery. Miss Mary Bobo's boarding house serves lunch every day spiked with old number seven. When we came here in 2013, Jack Daniels' great-grandniece, Lynn Tolley, ran the boarding house and told us that while it's against the law for her to pour you a glass, there is absolutely nothing stopping her from putting Jack Daniels in your food. Well, I know that many who visit Nashville will likely have some of that old number seven at some point in their visit, but what if a nice glass of red wine is more along your taste? You can find that at Arrington Vineyards, just a short drive from downtown Nashville. When you go for a tasting, it's possible you see a familiar face. Louisiana native and country music superstar Kix Brooks is one of the owners of the Arrington Vineyards. As Carl Wigger shows us, Arrington Vineyards is quickly building a reputation for their unique Tennessee wine country experience. In the rolling hills just 30 minutes south of Nashville, you can escape from Music City to Tennessee wine country at Arrington Vineyards. I was working at a uh, winery northwest of Nashville, a family winery, and worked there for about a decade. I was really enjoying what I did and wanted to plant some grapes and establish my own vineyard. That's where Kip Summers began this vineyard 15 years ago, but it wasn't long before Summers' dreams also began to grow. And so did the vineyard with the help of Louisiana native Kix Brooks. The property next door came up for sale and uh, we had uh, had met Kix Brooks through a mutual friend at church. I uh, asked him if he would like to, to go in with us and, and form a partnership and grow some grapes. And, and uh, he was interested, interested in buying some land and, and doing a little farming. And he's already doing some farming in Louisiana and, and was interested in the idea of doing that up near Nashville. And was interested in the whole wine uh, angle as well. We joined forces and doubled the size of the vineyard. And you know, he asked me, what are we going to do with all these grapes? And I said, well, we're we'll, going you know, to sell them to other wineries. And he said, well, what do we need to do to, to, to have our own wine? And, and I said, well, here's a business plan. Why don't, we, why don't we look into it? They opened the doors to this tasting room and began production here on this property in 2007. Soon after, John Russell joined the partnership, and the trio and their team have created a vineyard and a winery that has fans and awards from all across the country. It becomes a really nice um, sort of agritourism experience for people to come out and enjoy the vineyards, look at the vineyards, uh, drink the wine that was made from those vines, and um, enjoy the surroundings, have a picnic, maybe listen to a little uh, down-home music, and, and make a day of it. Now you can visit the vineyard for a tasting and a tour year-round. You can also experience music in the vines every Saturday and Sunday from April to October. And I can say that I'm a little upset that Carl didn't bring me with him, but I would love to come back to experience that firsthand. To plan your own trip to Arrington Vineyards, head on over to our website at twilighttv.org. Nashville goes by another name, Music City, and I know that there's a beautiful rock formation behind me here at the Jack Daniel Distillery, and I like rock music, but you know, Nashville's known for other styles. From the Grand Old Opry to Elvis to country, you hear all of the hits today in the music that spawned more musicians and songwriters than almost anywhere else. Twyla's Neil Melanson caught up with a Louisiana transplant who came to Nashville trying to make it big while enjoying all the city has to offer. Even in the rain and cold, the sights and sounds of music in Nashville are everywhere. Guitar cases are as common as umbrellas here. Neon lights illuminate Music City's rich history. Nashville is home to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, where in these walls are immortalized such folks as Johnny Cash, Patsy Cline, and Hank Williams. It's also an enduring monument to the link between country music and the rural lifestyle that spawned so many of the stories told in their songs. The burn CD, free bird by me in a steep, dead by me up down, up down, up down. There's a new story being told in Nashville, a new generations of singers and songwriters trying to make it in the digital age. CJ Solar, a Baton Rouge transplant here, is one of them. We took a trip up to Nashville when I was in 7th or 8th grade and uh, we went to the Grand Ole Opry and it was Dirk Bentley, Brad Paisley and, and Blake Shelton were playing and I was like man 
whatever these guys are doing, that's what I want to do. The band is getting ready for a gig Tuesday night in order to get a contract with a new management team. They're normally a trio, but they've had a new stand-in rhythm guitar player for the show who's picking up their set list here. Drummer Nick Gibbons met CJ only two weeks after they had both moved to Nashville about the same time and says he now sees the future in the kind of country music his band plays. Before I knew I was moving to Nashville, I was not much of a country guy. Um, I will say I've learned to absolutely love it. You kind of come to it through the songwriters and through how the songs come together, and then you learn to really love the genre as a whole. Even a love for that genre and a lifestyle centered around music can't replace dedicated practice, and that they do. Practice does make perfect and hungry bellies. They do take the time to indulge in Nashville's vibrant youth scene with farm-to-table restaurants like Burger Up here. In an era that has seen pop acts like Taylor Swift and hip-hop dominate mainstream music, there's a new wave that's bringing a fresh energy to this grand old town, even as they honor their roots. My grandparents lived in Kentwood, Louisiana, and we'd go out there and spend summers out there. And um, you know, my, uh, train, they trained cutting horses out there, and we did you know all kinds of stuff. And uh, I just always you know loved listening to country music and um, those kind. Of, I don't know, it's just a lot more relatable than whatever pop music is usually singing, <laughs> singing about. Their session guitarist picks up on their music pretty quickly, and it's no surprise. The talent in this town is everywhere, driven by youth and a common love of music. Eventually, though, it's time for the show. Below an old record store is a hot spot for up-and-coming acts, and there's a big crowd tonight. They, too, can sense a change in the guard in Nashville and welcome it with applause. For This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, I'm Neil Malawson. The CJ Solar Band plays regularly across the South, mostly on nights between Thursday and Sunday. In fact, they'll be in Baton Rouge in March for a songwriters festival in Baton Rouge. We'll have more links and some of their songs on our website, twilatv.org. Still to come on this special edition of Twyla, taking the message of trade overseas to leave no stone unturned. But first, the more you know about GMO, the better. Stay with us. I know I hope they're fighting today. I hope they are. Find your place in the country and the lender who can get you there. Find Louisiana Land Bank. Financing for country homes, recreational property, farms and ranches, and agribusiness. Before you sweeten your morning joe, before the icing on the cake, before the sugar hits the shelf, it begins with a family of sugarcane farmers dedicated to growing Louisiana for more than 220 years. The Sugarcane Growers of Louisiana, making life sweeter naturally. Sugarcane, sweet sugarcane. Louisiana oysters, salty, sweet, and delicious. But have you ever thought about what happens to all those oyster shells? Most of them end up in trash cans and landfills. The Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana is changing this with its Oyster Shell Recycling Program. And you can help by visiting these participating restaurants. It's a simple and delicious way to restore our coast. The shells will then be used to sustain and rebuild oyster reefs. Remember, once you shuck them, don't just chuck them. Landowners are minding the Louisiana forest for our grandchildren. A place for wildlife recreation, lumber for homes. It's the right thing to do. Forestry, covering half our state, all of our hearts. Throughout the 99th Annual Convention of the American Farm Bureau, members were hosted at the beautiful Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center. While here, many visited the massive trade show featuring great exhibits from Caterpillar, Case IH, and John Deere. There was also a very neat display by Monsanto that invited farmers and ranchers to share their own thoughts on modern farming and advocating for the ag industry. 
Attendees were also able to attend a variety of workshops with subject matter ranging from the upcoming farm bill to organic farming to advocacy. As always, the topic of GMOs was up for discussion at many of those sessions. Speaking of sessions about GMOs, year after year, GMO crops have become more important both for farmers to do their jobs and to feed the world. They've been scientifically proven to be safe. In fact, more research has been done on this topic than on anything else humans eat. Yet, there is still controversy over the issue. At this year's convention, Hillary Maracle, a member of the AFBF Promotion and Education Committee, held a workshop to help farmers communicate why GMO products are safe and beneficial for everyone. When I talk GMOs, my first gut instinct is to talk science. But the reality is I need to talk values. I need to connect on a level that our consumer understands that I care to, that I believe in the importance of the food supply and the safety of our food supply. So we need to connect on a values level rather than just always talking the science. Miracle's presentation was live streamed during the convention as available online. We'll link it to you over on our website, twilighttv.org. Another big issue at this year's convention, trade. USDA Undersecretary of Agriculture Tom McKinney spoke to the convention about his new appointment. McKinney was back from six weeks worth of travel in foreign countries promoting U.S. ag trade. Some of these countries are not traditionally big ag trading partners, but are part of his philosophy of no stone unturned, meaning they're letting the world know that the U.S. is open for business, especially as more and more countries are looking to add protein to their diets. McKinney said refinements to the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, are possible even likely, especially as they relate to trade between the U.S. and Canada. My sense is that this next round will tell us a lot. Each side has put on, put on the table various um, uh, opportunities, and it seems like some uh, one country or two or three would like, some uh, they don't. And it's time, I think, for a lot of the coming together. It's always typical for the last and most difficult issues to be covered last. Got that. It's getting about time to do that. Now, I'll speak just for ag. I challenge the Canadians in particular to step up and lay out what they wish. We have done so. Let's get a response uh, because we don't want any of us, any of us, to look back and say we missed the boat because somebody made a decision and we're no longer negotiating. USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue has given McKinney a goal of a million miles traveled to promote trade overseas. Still to come on Twyla, we'll look at what you were posting online during the 99th annual meeting of the American Farm Bureau Federation. Stay with us. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Farming is my way of life. I chose this career, but farming chose me. A lot of people ask you what you do, and I tell them I'm a farmer. I'm a cattleman. I am a fisherman. I'm a scientist. I'm a steward of the land. I am a farm woman. I am Farm Bureau. I am Farm Bureau. I am Farm Bureau. I am Farm Bureau. I am a Farm Bureau. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea.
This week, Music City became one of the most social cities in the country. From honky-tonk travels to the Grand Ole Opry, mile-long lines to see Trump, and did we mention President Trump? <laughs> Trump, Trump, and more Trump posts. Social media was definitely a huge topic here in Nashville. In fact, the hashtag AFBF18 was a nationally trending topic on Twitter this week. So who created the most popular social media post from convention? Well, the real Donald Trump, of course. President Trump shared this AFBF video clip featuring a crowd shot of Louisiana's own Joey and Lisa Register that was liked more than 84,000 times. I tell you now, we in Louisiana love them more than 84,000 times. I know. While all of the buzz around President Trump's address during the convention certainly generated a lot of AFBF posts on social media, his visit also had folks outside the farm community talking about agriculture and the issues important to rural America. Convention goers plugged into Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to share photos and videos from their Nashville experience, while social media focused workshops encouraged farmers and ranchers to share their ag stories online to make an impact with consumers. And for the first time ever, American Farm Bureau live streamed most of the events and activities from this year's convention. From workshops and YFNR contests to the general sessions, including Trump's address, the live stream coverage allowed Farm Bureau members who couldn't make it to Nashville a chance to experience virtually all all of the events in real time with a click of a button. To see all of our social media coverage from the 99th annual AFBF convention, just visit our website at twilatv.org. Now we move on to our first trending trivia of the year, and this time our question is, which item causes the distinction between bourbon and Tennessee whiskey? Is it A, wood barrels, B, charcoal, or C, corn? To enter this week's trivia contest, simply log on to your Facebook or Twitter account and post your answer with the hashtag Twilight Trivia. We'll select one winner from the correct answers to receive a special prize pack with lots of souvenirs from our trip here in Nashville, including the Jack Daniels Distillery, although you might have to be 21 to play this time. We'll do a double check on that. Well, this year's convention wrapped up with a second line parade courtesy of our Louisiana Farm Bureau members. President Ronnie Anderson invited everyone to come on down the bayou next year to celebrate the American Farm Bureau's Centennial Convention in New Orleans, where the good times are always rolling. Yeah, we're really looking forward to hosting everyone from across the country and show them some Louisiana hospitality. Mm -hmm. And we hope you will join us too. And that does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when Avery and Neil will bring us stories from Spain and Portugal. I cannot wait for that trip. We're going there with the LSU Ag Leadership Class 15. And before we go, I wanted to say a few thank yous. First, to the folks here at the Jack Daniel Distillery, thank you so much for allowing us to shoot our show here and sample a couple of things as well. And also a special thank you to the American Farm Bureau staff for providing us with some of the video you saw in this show and for supporting us on the ground in Nashville. And if you like the music you've been hearing in this show, that song is Cool Blue by Baton Rouge musician Eric DeSanto. He has a new disc out with his co-songwriter Kristen Corville. That disc is called 42 Miles. It is definitely worthy to be in your CD collection. Well, that does it for this edition. You might be leaving us, but I think we're going to stay here for just a little bit longer. Yes, we'll see you next time on Twilight.